Hello everyone, this is John, and I want to welcome you to another oil painting video. This is the painting that we're going to uh, paint together today. It was done on an ampersand gesso board with an inch and a half cradle, and we used the uh, Winsor Newton Griffin Elkid oil paint. So please get your stuff together and let's go paint. Bye. Hello everyone, and welcome to another exciting oil painting video. Um, we are going to slap some color up. If you uh, have noticed now and we're just going to kind of see what happens lately the last couple of videos i've been um adopting this style of painting and i tell you what i really like it i really okay there's a lot to be said for having a sketch and having a plan and everything else and i have nothing against that but i tell you what it really is i don't know it's almost empowering when you just throw some color up and see what shapes appear and don't appear and I'd like to take credit for this uh, style all myself, but I would be lying to you and myself. Um, I really started, I guess, experimenting with this style after I was watching videos from Stuart Davies. Stuart Davies um, does a lot of videos like this, where he'll just kind of put the paint up there, and he'll, um, like, I think it's oxide red and sap green, and then he'll just kind of make shapes and stuff. And then there's another person, Dennis Sheehan, I want to say is his name. And he has a similar style to this as well as far as just throwing. Now, both of them are more tonalist than I am. You know, I still have a lot of color and stuff. But I love the approach, okay, where you just put the color on and kind of let the painting paint itself and just see what happens. Okay, I'm just putting Payne's Gray onto a blue sky. Why? I don't know. It looks like it might work. So I'm going to blend it out a little bit. And then um, once I blend it out, I'm going to reestablish that tree line, okay? And there's a little hill on the left. And like right now, you can see the sky on the left. It just, it looks ugly. But those are the colors that we're going to start with. And we're going to kind of go with the uh, sky from there. Now, this main sketch color I'm using is ultra French Ultramarine. I'm sorry. French Ultramarine and um, Alizarin Crimson. And that's what I'm using to start with for... Um, kind of like the initial putting the colors down. And now I'm using a brush that I got from, where did I get that? I want to say Ace Hardware. It was like a $5 two-inch brush. It's a bristle brush, but they're real soft, so I don't like painting with it. With the paint on there, you know, from your palette, it's just not thick enough unless you use a whole lot of medium, which I don't like doing. However, it's a great blending brush like you just saw, where I can smooth out the sky and as you saw, I just smoothed out the sky right with the um, right over those trees, but you can still see the trees. I blended them together. And in a little while, later on, I'm going to use the uh, paper towel to kind of get the shapes of the trees out. And then I'll put in some, um, some tree trunks and sticks and stuff with a palette knife, and they're going to end up being you know really nice. So this is what I like doing with that brush, is just I like the blending. And it, like, and you have to have a tweezers around to get the hairs that shed. And this one shed two big ones all at the same time. But what I'm doing here is, I know it's hard to tell on the video, but I'm very lightly touching. I'm almost like grazing the white of the clouds to try to just... I'm moving the paint around. I'm not blending it hard enough to where it'll actually blend with the color underneath. So when I'm doing this, and sometimes I do it with the water as well, it's just a matter of um, moving the paint, not necessarily blending the paint. Okay, now here's just a paper towel tapping in with the color that's already there. And now you got some beautiful tree shapes. There you go. And like I said, um, Stuart Davies is a tonalist, pretty much. I'm not, but I love the approach, and I think I'm going to continue to incorporate this approach with my work. It, it's like I said, it's so freeing and it just, it really feels like you're creating. So that is what I intend to do from now on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still may sketch here and there when I'm in plain air, I'm going to have something in front of me, you know, stuff like that. But all in all, this is what I'm going to start to uh, gravitate towards more and more. Okay. Now you can use any brush you want for tree trunks. And you can use any knife you want. Uh, for some reason, I just like using the knife. 
I use the knife, you know, on a lot of different things during a painting. Some paintings I'll do with the knife exclusively. I haven't done one of those in a while, but um, I like the shape, I guess, that I get with these tree trunks because they're irregular. You know, they're not perfectly straight. They've got little bumps here and there, and that's how the trees really look. Where sometimes when you have a brush and you just paint them in, sometimes they look a little too straight, a little too smooth, a little, a little too manufactured. So that's kind of why I use the knife for stuff like this. Now, I'm going to leave it like that until almost the very end. Actually, I think it is the very end. I'm going to put in a few more trunks, but I'm not going to put the leaves on them for a while. But if you can see, what I did with the paper towel is I've got the tree shapes in the background. And I'm not going to cover that up completely with the leaves um, on the trunks that I just put in. I'm not going to cover the background completely. So you're still going to be able to see that um, through the trees that I um, put in. So you'll see how that is towards the end. But I wanted to make sure I left some of that background in to give it a little more depth and look like it's going into uh, kind of a misty area. Okay, now here I'm using the knife a little bit. And that's going to be um, olive green and raw sienna. Make that mid-ground over there in front of the trees. And this is going to be a disaster, this hill. It's not necessarily a mountain, but it's a hill. And I'm going to end up scraping that off because it's going to look pretty sad. And I don't like it when it looks sad. And I'm going to use the knife and put the highlights and go through it and do the shadows. And I'm going to really hate the way it looks. And then one of the beauties of oil paint is you can just take it right off. And I'm going to use the knife, scrape it off, put in another color, put in highlights in a different way, and then um, it's going to look really nice. And this is, if you've watched any of my videos, you see how I do my um, mountains, hills, things like that. I'll put in the highlight, then I'll brush the shadow, and then I'll redo the highlight, and life is good. Except for this particular one. For some, I mean, I got this, you can see it does have a three dimension to it, but it just looks so manufactured. It doesn't look real. It just, I didn't like it at all. I stood back a couple of times thinking maybe I was hallucinating and it's just like, now, and here I'm trying to kind of finagle it a little bit with the knife a little bit more and, you know, went from, in my opinion, bad to worse. I mean, they're not the worst mountains in the world, but they're sure not what I was looking for and had in mind when I put them in. So it didn't take me long to figure out that this isn't going to work. So give it about another three seconds. And guess what? There's the knife. Scrape it away. Now, I could have actually left it just like that. On the video, it looks a lot better than it did when you're right on it in person. And uh, you saw a little too much of the gesso board underneath. So I'm putting in a little bit of Payne's Gray and uh, raw umber, no, burnt umber, I'm sorry. And I'm getting a nice little, little hill, not necessarily a mountain, and I'm kind of smoothing it out a little bit. And then I'm going to put in raw sienna as the highlights. And instead of using the knife for this one, I'm just going to use a fan brush and just um, put them they're going to be a lot fainter than they were before. They're not going to be as pronounced. And I think that was the problem that I basically identified is they were just a little too bright for what they're going to be. So this is a little bit of raw sienna and I'm not putting it on light, maybe medium pressure because I want it to blend a little bit because I wanted these, um, these highlights to be a little more subtle, like I said, than I was before. And as you can see right now, it looks so much better now with this subtle look than it did before. And um, that's what you got to do. You know, just experiment. It doesn't hurt to try something. If it doesn't work, scrape it off and then try again. Put in a little bit of French ultramarine, just a light. I don't want a lot of, I don't want it heavy, but it does have to be a little darker value so you can see that three dimension form. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do with those. And like I said, it just came out so much better than the way I had it before. So don't ever be afraid to experiment because if it does come out bad, you didn't hurt anything. You can just scrape it off and go all over again. That's one of the beauties of oil paint. 
watercolors, you'd have no way in the world in doing that. And acrylics, you better be very fast because they dry so quickly. That's one of the beauties, one of the many beauties of oil paint. Okay, now I'm getting that mid-ground a little more to, um, sculpted here, I guess. And after that, I'm going to start with the water. And the water is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a bunch of different, well, not a bunch, but a few different values of blues. A little bit of green here and there, but not a lot. Not a lot. This one's going to be a little bit more fantasy blue-like and uh, for me. You know, I always was raised where the sky is blue and the water is blue and not necessarily a realistic-looking water, but I wasn't going for that. I'm going for the uh, fun water, and that's another thing that is great about painting in general is your artistic license. You can make it whatever you want. If I wanted to make pink water, that's up completely up to me. And that's one of the fun things about creating. You can do whatever the heck you want. So one of the things that you do want to try to do, and straight lines aren't recommended in painting, uh, unless you're doing architectural rendering and stuff, but it is a good idea, and it's not a rule or something you must do, but it's a good idea to have the far river bank, if you're doing a river, reasonably straight. And then you can do whatever with the foreground riverbank. You can do whatever the heck you want with that. Just for some reason, when it's straighter, it gives it a base, like an anchor. And then as long as your perspective is right, where one side is narrower, than, narrower wow, I'll say that fast five times, than the other, then you, um, then you have a good chance at getting it to look good. Now, I liked the way those background trees looked so much with the paper towel that I'm going to do a few of the foreground. Well, not foreground, but foreground for those, for that area. Um, little bushes and stuff. I didn't do a lot of them, but just put in a little bit for texture. And then pretty much go from there. And now this is French Ultramarine and Payne's Gray. It's a nice dark color. And that's going to be some of the foliage in front of the hill. And that uh, little forest on the right. And I'm not going to cover up everything completely. I'm going to leave a little bit of that faint color. Not a lot of it, but just a little bit here and there to dab. And then that basically grass line is what I'm using to define the edge. Okay, and like I said, you don't want to have straight edges everywhere. But you do want to have areas that are defined and a separator from one to the other. In landscapes, it's a good idea that he has some elements you can blend together to where you can't see where one starts and the other stops. And then other times, it's good to have, you know, a hard line where you define an area like what I just did there. And it's entirely up to you what you want to do. It's up to your eye and how you feel. That particular one just felt that way to me. Here I am making some pine trees. One of the easiest trees in the world to make. Just put in... A reasonably straight line you don't want it completely straight with um, a fan brush and then use the corner of the brush and just kind of make the branches that come out and then you have a bunch of believable pine trees here I'm putting in a highlight but the highlight isn't a really bright highlight if you see the painting up close and I'm not sure what size monitor you are viewing this on you know, if it's your phone or a tablet or something. But there is a highlight there on the left side. And I wanted to just make it to where it was very subtle. Just to change the value a little bit. Because these trees aren't to the foreground. They're mid to a little further back. Mid ground to a little further back. So they had to have a little bit on there. But not, you know, not a ton. And now I'm putting a little bit of highlight, not a lot, just a little bit on the grass in the foreground. Well, the midground, I'm sorry. Getting my grounds mixed up here. Just to give it a little bit of a variety. There we go. And that area is pretty much done. And if I'm not mistaken, I got the water next. Now that water base coat that I used, I had no white in it at all, as you can tell, because it's relatively transparent, as opposed to if you had white to it, which you'll see the difference here in a second. 
and it's French ultramarine and cerulean blue. And one of the things I do with my water is I'm not afraid to go up against the edges of the land and incorporate some of that color into the water, which in real life, that's what it would do. You know, whatever your ground color is around it is going to kind of shade the water a little bit with that color. It's going to reflect it a little bit. Now here, other than losing another hair on the, um, on the wood panel here, there we go. Get that puppy off. I'm using the side of the brush. It's a two-inch bristle brush. And I'm just using the side to kind of get a little movement in the water. Okay, you don't see it a lot now, but you will. And get the opaque nature uh, in there now. So I got the opaque in. Now I'm putting in more French ultramarine and cerulean. Just different combinations. And I'm going to let the different blues dictate the movement of the water. There's not going to be a ton of white, like uh, waves and white caps in this one. So it's going to be a little more defined by the blues as opposed to the white. The white I put in just to give it that opaque look so it's not transparent. And then go from there pretty much. But you can see the different shades of blue and a little bit of white in there. And that's why you can tell and give the illusion. And now I went way too much paint on there. That's the beauty of it. You just scrape it off. And now I'm going to finish it off with the white. So you have the white. I mean, you have the initial blue and cerulean. Then you have the white to make it opaque. Then you put in more of the French ultramarine to give it more depth. And now we have the, um, the um, direction of the water now that we're using our flimsy bristle um, blending brush, basically, is what I use it for. And this, you blend it as soft or as not as soft as you want. And I wanted to get a little bit more of that white out of there. Like I said a few minutes ago, I didn't want a ton of it. And I put a little too much in, so now I'm using the blue. And there is the movement I was looking for. So you can see the subtle swells without having those rough white caps, let's say, that uh, I have on uh, a lot of my rivers and stuff. Okay, one of my favorite mixtures here is Payne's Gray and French Ultramarine. And these are going to be the reeds that are going to hold the flowers up that we'll be putting in sooner than later. They're a lot of fun, too. You just you put a little bit more medium. In my case, the medium is the uh, Elkid, the Walnut Elkid medium. Because I like my oil painting to dry a little faster than, you know, a month. And then... Um, you just have a little bit extra medium so it flows real well. And then you just touch and pull up. And where it's narrower, you have them a little shorter. And where it's wider, the area, you just uh, extend and just hold it down a little longer as you're pulling up. But it's the same stroke. It just depends on how long you keep um, the brush on your canvas, or in this case, the wood. Okay, now we're going to put in... This is actually dioxazine purple which is a little hard to see on the video. And now that's alizarin crimson. And then I'm going to put yellow to it and then white in some areas to get the different colors. But this is going to be like the shadow part. And then when I put in the yellow and then when I put in the white, that'll be, you know, the highlights and it'll define it. and It'll make the flowers pop really nice. Speaking of which, there it is. See how it just makes them stand out? And now a little bit of white. And you want to vary everything. You don't want the same flower everywhere. You want to vary it up a little bit here and there. Looks like it's, you know, wildflowers in a mixture. And at this point in time, I decided I need some more flowers in the foreground all the way in the front. And that's what I'm doing here. This is the Payne's Gray French Ultramarine mixture. And I'm just putting in the base. You have to have dark so you can see the light. And initially, I was going to put yellow and um, green in. But it was too close to the value of the grass. So after I put it down next to it, it looked like they just, they were one and the same. You couldn't see where one started really and where the other stopped. So I decided, you know, that's not going to work. I wanted something a little bit more pronounced. So I went and cleaned my brush off and I went to white. And that is what, uh, boom, see how that just comes out? And then there's a, 
I forget the name of it is. I think it's Pale Rose. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'm using the um, Griffin Elkid oil paint from Windsor Newton. It's a great oil paint. It's very inexpensive. It's artist grade. Um, it dries very quickly, meaning probably 24 to 48 hours, and you got touch dry. Anywhere from four to eight weeks, and you can varnish. So they're awesome paints. I've been using them for many years. Um, but there's this color. I want to say it's a light pale rose or something. I forget what it is. That's the last color I was just using. And there's not a lot of uses for it, but it looked good for the flowers. So now we are doing our trees. And this is going to be varied mixtures of lemon yellow and olive green. I'm not using sap green in this one. Um, I'm using a lot more olive in this one because I want things to be a little subdued in some areas and then the flowers to stand out in other areas. If you've uh, seen my videos before, I like putting flowers and color into my paintings. Um, some people like that. Some people like them a little more subdued. So I do have a few of those where I don't have as many flowers and everything is a little bit more subdued. But nature, if you look at it, is so bright in so many areas especially in fields where there are so many wildflowers. I mean, even when you drive on the street and you see, like the Arboretum, where uh, I live, and uh, the, the Arboretum's in Lyle, Illinois. So when I pass by Lyle, and when I'm going somewhere, especially in the springtime, you know, there's a lot of places by the little river that's over there that's not even part of the Arboretum, but it's next to it. It's just alongside 53, and there's a bunch of different colors of wildflowers just growing all over the place, and they're beautiful. So I don't try to copy it, but I like the idea of, you know, a bunch of different colors all at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that little uh, notification bell so you know when I um, upload. I try to average at least once a week. So I hope everybody has a great work week, and I'll talk to you later.